Hey folks, it's Fifth Car here, how you doing? I am just taking this cultivator up to the shop. I've had enough of it, we've done half of Field 19. It's taking way too long, so I figured it would be better off if we just sold the thing and we buy a slightly bigger one. Before I do that, my question for this week. I have at the moment a front-mounted Lely mower, and I would like to do a load of silage soon for the biogas plant. We've been had a look in our last episode at a few different areas that we could go and mow, um, different meadows and that that lying around. Um, which mower would you like me to go along to get to go alongside my Splendimo 320FC? Do you want me to get the Pottinger Novacat, the side-mounted three-meter mower, the New Holland Discbine, the four-meter four trailed mower, um, the Splendimo 900MC, the butterfly mowers that go with this one here, so they go out either side of the tractor, uh, the 4.3 meter Kuhn GMD 4411. This is in the new Kuhn pack, the new DLC. That's a side mounted mower. That's quite a big one, actually, quite a, uh, for a side mounted mower. And then finally, we have the Class Disco 3450 Plus, which is a modded side mounted mower again. Uh, it's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want. And of course, don't forget to actually mouse over in the top right hand corner up here. There should have been a card come up by now and you can cast your vote and let us know which one you want. So, yeah, I've been doing a whole load of cultivating and we started planting corn in some of the fields in our last episode. Um, this cultivator just takes too long. It's yeah. It's taking way too long. And those rollers, I took the rollers up and I sold them. You remember we were about a, a minus a thousand euros. Um, the rollers actually did all right. We did, we got a reasonable amount of money for them. It was over, it was like, something like 4,300 euros each when I dragged them back to the shop and sold them. Um, and so with the 12,000 that we got there um, and what we get for selling this one, we should be able to buy another one. I was wondering whether or not I should buy a trailed cultivator and I don't think I will because um, the distance that you need to sort of allow for it to turn on the headlands is considerably bigger when you use a trailed one compared to a non-trailed one. So we're going to use a three-point linkage mounted one and I'm just going to take a quick look in just a sec and have a look. I've got an idea of the one that I want. Um, basically it's one of the bigger ones that I think our tractors that we've got at the moment can comfortably handle. And if we go here, that's only 3,200 euros. That's not as much as I thought that we would get. So let's go running in here and... Right, uh, cultivators. Now then, we've got just enough to buy that one. Um, and I was also thinking maybe we could go for this one. This is a four meter. However, it's a long one and it's trailed. This one here is also a four meter one. And it's part of the modular system. Um, but it's 18,000 and we can't afford it. But uh, then again, if I was to get it, we could get that one. So it's part of the modular system as well. That's four meters wide, four meters wide. And then it sort of goes in with the, the seed drill and everything. And we end up being able to run the whole thing all in one. So we need another 3,100 euros if we're going to go for that one. If we didn't, we would get this one here, which is 14,000. Um, this one requires 160 horsepower, but we didn't have too much trouble pulling it. Um... I'd really like to get that one, that one right there. It's um, We can use it just on its own, and being part of the modular system means that we're not going to have to buy it later on. Um, yeah, where am I going to get 3,100 euros from? It's, it's ticking down quite fast as well. You know what? We, we are, uh, no, we, we're just going to have to go with this one for now. So we're going to buy this one. Let's buy it. 14,000. I'm not going to lease the other one because I know that I've leased the quad bike at the moment. But generally, our rules stand on this map that we buy everything. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're just going to have to buy the... Is it Cavernland that we bought? Um, no, I don't actually know if it's Cavernland or not. It's a uh, Horsch, not Cavernland. So we bought a Horsch cultivator. And we will use that one. And then when we do have a bit more money later on, we will buy a slightly smaller one. Now... I ran this one for absolutely ages on the time-lapse series and I found it to be a very useful cultivator. It was quite good that we could um, expand out. Helper B has stopped work, tank empty. We're going to have to go and buy some more seed in a minute. Um, however, I used to drive it along like this and what I didn't realise until it was literally the episode that I was planning to sell it. 
uh, someone pointed out that I've been driving it along like this. It folds up. All that time I was using this particular cultivator and I didn't know, I didn't know that you could fold it up. Because I don't like having the help screen up in the top in the top right hand corner. So um, yeah, uh, top left hand corner I should say. And uh, yeah, so um, I spent all that time using it without actually folding it up. And thinking it was a little bit of a squeeze getting it down the roads. Never mind. That's, that's all done and dealt with. So I'm going to go and put this one going. And then I'm going to go to the seed drill. And we're going to run that one back to the yard so that we can top it up with seed. Um, you know, I am wondering. We've got to take it up the other end. We might have to run all the way back here to get seed. And then back up to the top again. And we don't have any way of carrying seed around. What did we do last time? Did I take a couple pallets of seed with us up to the top? You know, I can't remember now. I absolutely cannot remember what we did. Right, let me get this one going and then we'll get the um, the seed drill back and get it topped up. Just watch that one turn round there. I already notice a difference. The, just it, yeah, just the four metre compared to what we had last time. What was the last one? I think it was a, that one say, yeah. So we've, we've only got one extra metre. We've increased it uh, a third again on what it was. But because it does tend to overlap slightly, it's already increasing the amount that it takes in a slice, uh, which means there's far fewer slices, and yeah, generally everything is tickety-boo and hunky-dory. It's just what we want. So all we've got to do now is top this one up so that we can carry on planting our corn. We've then got to plant that field there. I've got to plant sugar beet up at the other end. I've got to um, spread slurry on the fields up at the other end. We've got all sorts of things that we need to do and not a huge amount of time to do it in. I wanted to get most of the planting finished today, if I could. Um, we are using up all sorts of resources here, which means that we're using up a load of money as well. It's quite expensive getting seed like this, isn't it? Um, it's not the ideal situation to have where you're getting it in, um, getting a capacity like that, uh, out of storage like that. We need to get some fuel for this tractor as well as he's starting to get low. That's going to put us back into minus numbers. But at least we were able to get that cultivator. That should speed things up a little bit because that cultivator has sort of been a, a choke point on our workflow for quite a little while. Um, so now that that one is all good, we'll be able to speed things up. I'm going to get this one going back over here, then we're going to head up the other end and we're going to get the slurry from the pigs and we're going to start spreading that on the fields that uh, we got up the other end. Um, what else? There was something else that I wanted to do today. I'm, go I'm going to put this one going and then I'm going to go and get the... We're going to use the quad bike to nip up to the other end. I thought that'd be quite nice. Um, but no, there was something I can't remember what I was thinking of. Oh, yes, I know. Right, well, there was a couple of things. Um... One was, I was talking about the purple machine. We've got the purple slurry tanker up there, and I might get, you know, a, several of you have said you quite like the idea of having the purple machinery, um, and some of you have said, absolutely awful choice, Frith. I don't know what you were thinking. I'm assuming you're colorblind because yellow and purple just is not a good mix. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of, some like it, some don't. Um, what I was thinking was when I start my next map, I'm going to do like a, a, a video, it's just going to be a very short video before I start the map, and I'm going to put a series of polls on there about how you want me to run the next map, and one of the things I'm going to do is in the next map, everywhere that we have a customizable choice of colour, I'm going to do two colours. Um, and I'm going to give you a choice of five combinations to choose from. One of them is going to be yellow and black. Um, yellow and black is a combination that I think looks quite good. Um, one of them is definitely going to have to be yellow and purple after what people have said. Uh, so yeah, we'll go for... It'd be like... Um, I'm thinking that the first colour would be wheel trims and then the second colour would be like the main colour. So wheel trims would be yellow but the main machine would be purple. Possibly, I'm, I'm not in. I'm, I, it's not set in stone yet, but it's possibly how I'm going to do things like that. Um, and there's a few other. I tell you what, I'll carry on telling you about this. I'm going to go and get the quad bike a minute. And we'll start driving up the top because I want to get the slurry spread. I don't want to just sit here and watch corn being planted. Right. So the um, 
there's, a gonna, there's gonna be uh, several colors to choose from, maybe a few color schemes to choose from, and any machines that I have the option to choose a color, uh, those are the colors that we'll stick with. So if you go for, say, um, it, I might just end up just doing one color, and then, like, if it's a secondary colour for wheels or something, I'll just uh, pick whatever I fancy on the, at the time. So basically, most of it is colour coordinated with purple or green or blue or whatever it might be. So there will be five colours to choose from. Um, and I was having a think about it, and there's quite a few different aspects of a map that I think it'd be good if you guys could all tell me what you want before we start. So... For example, um, on the next map, do you want me to continue using three fertilization stages or do you want me to switch it over to just the one fertilization um, is all we need to do. Do you want me to keep plowing on or switch the plowing off? Um, actually, I might not answer. I might not ask that one. I might just keep the plowing on anyway. I quite like having the plowing. It's a, a, a bit of realism that I particularly like. So, um, But yeah, you, you get the general idea. I'll be asking a whole load of questions like that. and. You're allowed five polls on a video, so I will do five questions regarding the next map that I do um, when we get to it. So it's obviously it's not going to be just yet. We've got a few other things to do first. So be, first of all, we have in here 38,000 litres of slurry. So let's start filling this one up. Oop, I need to go there. Now I can start filling it up. Um, well, since this takes 15,000, doesn't it? So we can get two full tankers and another little bit as well, or half a tanker. Um, that should be enough. I would think that one tanker would definitely be enough to do where the field we're going to be putting the sugar beet into, even if it isn't enough to do the other one as well. The sugar beet is the one that I'd like to try and um, get maximum yield from if we can. Uh, you know, I'm not actually sure if we will be able to. I'll spread slurry now, then we'll cultivate... Then we'll... Right, yeah, 15,000, so we'll get another one and a half tankers. Well, we might just try and save the slurry. Use it all for the sugar beet field. I'm not quite certain yet. We're not going to have time to do all of the cultivating and sugar beet... Uh, the planting and everything today. So what I'm going to do is... We'll let the cultivator carry on with what it's doing, and we'll probably bring it up here a little bit later on. But... Before next episode, I'll have finished doing all the cultivating. I won't necessarily have done all of the, um, the drilling. We'll have some of that still to do. Now, where is the point that I need to start? I think I actually going to start about here in order to get it to line up straight. And now the next question is, will it be able to turn properly on the end of the row? So we're going to um, take a bit of a look at this. I was going to have another play around with the ATV in a little while. I'm just going to make sure that this one can actually do its job properly. I'll come right down to the end here. And I'll stop. And then if I do a pass up across here, that should be then enough to allow it to turn. Um, and we'll probably have to do the same again over the other side. Not quite sure yet. Let's come up here. Uh, right, while I'm doing this, Helper G has completed their task. He needs to go forward a bit more before he... Oh, okay. Major lag spike there. Did you see that? I don't know what happened with that. That's, I have heard reports, people saying that they get these like odd major lag spikes turn up in the game. Um, and that's the first one I've experienced, I think. I mean, maybe I've had another one. I think I just knocked my mic there. Sorry if you just heard a, had a loud sort of rattling noise. It's awful when it does happen. Um... Yeah, so, not really sure what that was all about. Keep going. The we'll soldier on, and hope that it doesn't happen again. I don't really want to be getting loads of lag spikes coming through on my videos. I know it looks absolutely awful to look at. Right, it's gone a little bit further. Should be about right. It did try to do it just then, when I put the, um, the hired help going. Wasn't, um, wasn't a major issue. But it, I, can, I can sort of see it lagging a little bit. I know it does it when I go to bring the shop up. So I, I'm not sure what's causing this. This is something that we'll need later investigation, I would think. Right. In order to get this field to spread properly, we might have to do a couple of passes down this end. And then we can let it sort of do it itself. I'll come round here. So yeah, I, um, 
I was told that yellow and purple is a horrible combination. I'm going to have to respectfully disagree on that one because I don't. I think it looks all right. Right now we've. It is moving. It hasn't completely frozen out altogether. But yeah, obviously, it's um, it's something to do with the hired help here, and I'm not quite sure what. I'm going to try it again, see what it does. It might be actually though, because it's slightly back from the field. It, it's how it's moving on to the actual field itself. That may be something to do with it, although obviously I'm not entirely certain. Um, but this is a first for me. It might be that it just doesn't like the fact that we've ploughed this field up. Um, it might, yeah, it's something to do with the, the latest update. I really don't know. I, I don't know what's causing this. Interesting, nonetheless. I, I am quite fascinated about why it's doing this. Now we've got to go spreading slurry across a really steep hill, which is always interesting. So if I come out here, see, this is fine. I think it's something to do with the working on the border of the field. Although what that might be, I'm not quite certain. Anyway, the other thing that I was wanting to say today is um, Joshua Doll. He has done a little bit of research after I said the other day that I wasn't aware of any farm machinery that has come up um, with a purple colour. We've got yellow, we've got red, uh, greens, blues, we've got all sorts of different colours, but I wasn't aware of a purple one, and he's done a bit of research. And he said he did manage to find some old Oliver tractors that were purple, but the kind of pinkish hue to them. However, he doesn't think that those were, that was a factory edition. It, it doesn't think it came out of the factory looking like that. He actually thinks that that may have been an after-production spray job. So that we're not certain of. And he has managed to find some Japanese tractors, some small Japanese, um, you know, they use the compact tractors in Japan a lot. Um, he did manage to find some bright purple compact tractors um, from Japan that uh, were in purple. They were bright purple and that was um, as they came off the production line in bright purple. And that's the only ones that he could find. Um, so thank you very much, Joshua Doll, for that research. That is absolutely brilliant. I really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, by having purple machinery, we are quite unique, it would appear, in the farming world because nobody else seems to do it. Certainly not in this part of the world. Um, yeah, I, was, I, I did find that quite fascinating, actually, and I will try when I've got some time to have a, a look further and see if we can find any other evidence of purple machinery anywhere. Not quite sure if it exists or not. Let's just go into our big map here and check out our hired help. We've got, um, I think our field of cultivating is almost done. So once he's done, he'll be able to move up here and start cultivating this field. And the sowing, that is almost done as well. So he'll be able to move into field 19. We'll be able to swap them all over in a minute. We'll just let this one carry on. I was thinking of jokes earlier. I was actually telling a few jokes to people, and we were talk we were talking about the the simple jokes. You know, the sort of thing like what's brown and sticky? A stick. Why can't a centipede play football? It takes him too long to put his boots on. Uh, why can't he play cards in the savanna? There's too many cheaters about. You know those kind of jokes. I really like those kind of jokes. And there's one joke that I remembered from my youth, and it's a joke that um, most people. It's not one that is side-splittingly funny. It's not one that has you... Yeah, it, it's it's a special kind of a joke. And I'm going to just finish off this field um, and go and have a look at the other stuff that is... Oh, no, I don't want to press that. I want to do that. I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to finish off this field myself. And once I've finished it... I'm not going to spread slurry on that other field over there. I'm going to rely on a weeder for that one. It might just get one pass of fertilization this time round. Um, because I'd like to get as much fertilizer onto these sugar beets as we possibly can so that we get the maximum yield. Remember, we're only doing this little field here. So I'll finish doing this and move a couple of tractors around. And then I will meet you back here, I think, with the cultivator. I'll just run this one back and top it up with seed. 
we have 37 litres of seed left in the tank, which isn't bad considering we have now seeded all of that great big field, which is 15 and 20 combined, plus the little bits around the edge as well. Um, I don't think that's bad at all, actually. I am thinking that we will try to get 23 and 25 very, very soon. I'm not quite sure how soon I'm going to be able to do it, because one thing that I have been considering is when do I earn enough money to buy the tractor. Um, we want the bigger tractor so that we can uh, really sort of speed things up a bit around here and do fast road work. And not only that, I did tell you that I was going to get it and I still haven't got that tractor. So what I might do is between this week and next week do a whole load of extra work, enough to earn about €200,000 which will cover the price of the new tractor and anything that we might want to do next week, I should think. So we'll be able to have, we'll be able, there'll be one of the things that we'll be able to do first thing next week is buy our Massive Ferguson tractor, the one that we um, originally said that we were going to get. And then after that, we can worry about getting our new fields. Um, mainly I want to do it that way round because um, the fields are going to cost a lot more than the tractor. And once we've got the tractor, and there's a few other things that we can do as well, uh, the, um, yeah, what's it? It's 160,000 for the tractor, I think. We're crashing again. No, we're not. It's just laggy. We are getting... I'm noticing a bit of lag on the map this week. Um, it's not normal, but we, we are getting a bit. So 210 horsepower for 172. Uh, engine set up. The maximum size engine. Yeah, that's another 35,000. That puts up to 200. So we're nearly 300 horsepower. Um, and that's going to be 207,000 euros. So I'm going to need to earn about a quarter of a million. So I will do that, I hope, in various jobs before next week. Um, I'm not going to guarantee it, though. That is a lot of money to actually have to earn now that I think about it. But anyway, I'm going to go up the other end a minute, and then there's a few other things I need to say. We'll take Fluffy here, and we're going to go cut through the woods. We can take a look at our... Actually, you know, I haven't actually tried driving this one in cab yet. Ha <laughs> ha This is brilliant! I'm lo I am loving this. This is brilliant. Uh, so yeah, we've got our cultivator. He's working away over there. And it will continue to do so. I imagine that this would make us feel seasick fairly quickly. Um, we're going to spend the rest of the episode just having a bit of a bum around in this bike. Um, and doing all sorts of things. I have driven quad bikes a lot. One place I worked had a very powerful petrol engine quad bike. That we used to use for all of our lambing purposes and actually come to think of it the other place that used a quad bike a lot used it for lambing but they had a diesel quad bike which didn't have nearly as much oomph to it but i mean you once you got it going you could get a bit of speed going right well, i don't like this it's making me feel a bit seasick um so yeah i've driven um and i've tried various other ones just sort of one-offs here and there um so i've done quite a bit of driving of quad bikes and done all sorts of various ridiculous things with them over time. None of which should be repeated at home, I can assure you. They are highly dangerous, you know, trying to do jumps and stunts and donuts and everything else that everybody does when they get on a quad bike and could end up seriously injuring you. Yeah, so um, you really shouldn't do it. I'll just say that right now, you really shouldn't do it. Uh, can we actually get across here? Oh no, that's the edge of the map right there, isn't it? Let me bring up the, the little map there so that we can sort of see what we're doing. That there is as far as we can go. Yep, we can't even touch the barrier. So that is our absolute limit as to where we can go. Let's go around here. We shouldn't really be driving on the tracks when the barrier's down. Um, what do we got here? We're going to have a bit of a... Whoa, okay. It's a bit rough and bouncy. We're going to have a bit of exploration just before we go. So, yeah, that ridiculous joke that I was um, talking to you about, I think I will tell it to you. I'm sure that you're going to appreciate this. So, anyway, um, there was this bloke. He owned a big mansion, and it was made out of gold, right? He was extremely wealthy. And one night, there was a knock on the big golden door. And lo and behold, outside, in the rain, was a rather bedraggled-looking person who said that his car had broken down, and could he please use the telephone so that he could phone for help? And the man said, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid the telephone is down as uh, due to the storm. Um, but you're welcome to stay the night, and uh, we can sort you out in the morning. Hopefully the phones will be uh, sorted. Um, I've got plenty of space here, you can stay the night. And so the, the uh, chap on the doorstep, he agreed. Um, so 
the owner of the house, he closed the great big golden doors and he led the man down a long golden corridor, up a golden staircase, along another golden corridor, and he came to a golden doorway. And in the golden, in behind the golden doorway was a golden bedroom. There was a golden bed with golden blankets and golden pillows, a golden wardrobe in the corner, and the man said there's some golden pyjamas in there if you'd like to put them on. Um, it'll be a lot more comfortable than your wet, um, smelly clothes that you're wearing right now. You can just put them on the side and my... Um, uh, my housekeeper, sorry, my housekeeper will take care of them in the morning uh, when she does the rest of the laundry. So he took off his clothes and he put them in a pile and he put on the golden pyjamas. He got into the golden bed after brushing his teeth with a golden toothbrush at the golden sink and laid his head wearily down on the golden pillow and he went to sleep. A short while later there was another knock on the door and the owner of the mansion, he went and he answered the door and there was a rather bedraggled looking person who had said that who said that his car had broken down and he really needed to use a telephone because he couldn't get any mobile reception out here and the man said i'm very sorry but you won't get mobile reception around here and the telephones are out uh you're welcome to stay the night if you like and we can sort it all out in the morning and so the bloke agreed and so he went inside closed the great big golden door led him down a golden corridor up the golden staircase down another golden corridor to a golden door and showed him to a, another golden bedroom there was a big golden bed in there with golden blankets and golden pillows a golden sink in the corner a golden wardrobe a golden chair and a golden bedside table and he said to him there are golden pajamas in the golden wardrobe you are more than welcome to change into those and my housekeeper will wash your wet things for you the man said thank you very much, and he got changed into the golden pyjamas. He brushed his teeth with a golden toothbrush at the golden sink, and laid his head down on the golden pillow, tucked himself in with the golden blankets, and went to sleep. A short while later, there was a knock on the door, and lo and behold, there was someone else who had gotten caught out in the storm. His car had broken down, and he was looking for a phone so that he could phone for help. And the man said, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that we don't have phones at the moment. The phones are out, the storm has knocked the lines down, and you won't get mobile reception out here. But you're welcome to stay the night. And so the man said, yes, okay, I'll stay the night, thank you very much. And so he closed the great big golden door behind him, led him down a golden corridor, up the golden stairs, down another golden corridor, and came to yet another golden bedroom. And in the golden bedroom, of course, was the golden bed with golden blankets and a golden pillow, a golden wardrobe. This one had a golden chest of drawers in it. And he said, you're welcome to change out of those wet things. My housekeeper will take care of them for you. And you can uh, use the golden pajamas that are in the golden wardrobe um, if they'll be a lot more comfortable for you. So the man thanked him and he brushed his teeth at the golden sink using a golden toothbrush. He went and... Oops, careful. He... We are going across the tracks here. We're not supposed to do that. Uh, so, yeah, he brushed his teeth at the golden sink using a golden toothbrush. He used a golden flannel that happened to be there, and he washed his face with a golden flannel and um, laid his head down on a golden pillow, tucking himself in with golden blankets and went to sleep in his wonderful golden bed. The following morning... Ooh, we can't go any further than that. That is as far as we can go down this way. The following morning... Uh, the three men woke up and they came out of their golden bedrooms at around the same time and they seen each other and swapped stories and realised that everybody had broken down the night before and it was obviously just a night for those things to happen. And so they made their way down another golden corridor, down a, a wide set of golden steps and came to a golden, um, golden dining room where there was a table and the owner of the mansion was sat there waiting for them and he said, please, have some breakfast. And so the, t the three men came along and they sat to the huge, great big golden table pulling up the golden chairs. They looked at the golden cutlery and the golden plates and all of the golden spread that was laid out before them and trying to decide what they should have. And there was bowls of golden cornflakes and there were steaming piles of golden kippers. Two of the men decided that they would have some golden cornflakes for breakfast and one of the men decided that he would have kippers for breakfast. And this proves... Ladies and gentlemen, that two out of three people prefer cornflakes to kippers for breakfast. Yes, that's it. <laughs> you were expecting something a lot more than that. I used to love telling that joke when I was a child. It was absolutely brilliant. People would be on the edge of their seats waiting for something fantastic to happen, and that's all you get. <laughs> right. 
I have done enough. I have wasted <laughs> I've wasted enough of your time with my ridiculous jokes. Um, oh, nice air time there. I nearly tipped it over, but we got a little bit. So I have been driving around. We've just sort of been having a little bit of exploration, seeing what the map has that we've not really seen yet. Um, not a great deal, but just before I go, I need to ask you my weekly question. I am going to be doing a whole load of silage very soon, and among other things, I'm going to need a mower. So we have this Lely front-mounted mower right here, but I want something to go with it so we can cut the grass a bit quicker. So do I get the Pottinger Novacat, the 3-meter uh, side-mounted mower? Do I get the 4-meter New Holland Discbine trailed mower? Do I get the 9-meter Splendimo butterfly mowers that go out either side of the tractor when this one goes on the front? Uh, do I get the 4.3-meter Kuhn GMD side-mounted mower? That's probably the biggest side-mounted mower that we would get. Um, or the Class Disco 3450 3.4-meter side-mounted mower? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below and let us know which one you want. Now, a topic of conversation for today, other than um, most likely giving me some serious stick for that awful joke, um, can, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, no! I was hoping I would be able to get over there. There's one thing I don't like about the quad bike, is it's very, very easy to tip this thing over. This one, this one in particular seems a bit top-heavy. Um, it might be the track wheels. I'm not quite sure. Can I? I can't push it over, can I? No, I'm going to have to reset it again. Um, yeah, I do reset this one quite frequently. So anyway, um, the topic of conversation for today is, one, let me know a few jokes. If you've got any decent jokes, um, just let us know a few. I always appreciate a good joke. And number two is, what do you think of the idea of me asking you a whole load of questions for the next map? What questions would you like me to ask in regards to setting it up? Um, time scale, uh, would you want to say on time scale, or do you think it should just stay as it is? Uh, the fertilization, um, color scheme is definitely going to be one. Um, asking which map that's going to be separate, I will be asking you which map. So just, yeah, what questions do you think should be asked? Um, which sort of aspects of originally starting a map would you like to have a say in? Um, give me your views. Head in the comment section down below. Let us all know what you think. Um, but that really is all I've got time for today. I think I've already gone over time now. That looks awful. I'm going to reset that one right now. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and see me as well. That would be awesome. Hang on. There we go. Right. Uh, I'm going to have to hitch a lift back home, I think. Yeah, there's a road over there. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. I'm going to finish doing all of the cultivating, and I'll finish planting the corn. Um, actually, I'll probably finish doing most of the seed drilling as well before next episode so that we can move things along a little bit. I'll see what I've got time for, and also, if I can... I'll earn a load of money, possibly enough to even buy our massive Ferguson tractor, but again, I can't guarantee that. Uh, it just depends what time I've got. Um, yeah, so anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, I already said all that, didn't I? I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm. You'll have to forgive me, I am very, very tired. I'm recording this quite late at night, and I've had a very busy couple of days, so um, I am extremely tired. I've never been up here. What is this? This is the... Oh, the biomass heating plant, of course. Yes. Right, let's take a quick look up here. Um, very, very quickly, just before we... Oh, there's nothing else to see. Um, is No, we can't use the crane on this one. That's a shame. Right, um, until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.